these PhD chemists who are like all analytical thinking, right? And they say all this weird stuff that you just know you can't put in practice in the field, right? Great thinking, you're way up here philosophically, but no way can I do that in the field. So I had my PhD chemist When we did the URS, 
for this tank, we said we need the ability to sample the CIP. So the, the engineering group gave me a stand pipe. Like, what is that? Like, oh, that's your ability to sample. So well, I need a valve, right? I said, oh, we thought you could put your own valve on there. Really? I said, well, the URS didn't say. This is one of those volleydations, right? How many of you do volleydation? Like you volleyball with the engineering, they volleyball it back. You volleyball it back and say it sucks. They volleyball it back and say, I gave you exactly what you asked for. Ask better next time. <laughs> but anyway, so, so I had to clean validation on this tank. I hook up the flex hose. Now the problem with the standpipe, and this, this is the connectivity problem, which wasn't any better, but the standpipe literally came up out of the pipe like this, right? And I said, how am I supposed to get flow out of that? And they said, oh, oh yes, we thought about that. You're right, you can't get flow out of that, so we put a valve here. When you want a sample out of this, you're going to crack back on this valve, which will give you a back pressure, right? And push fluid up out that sample valve. Plate. You'll get a sample. Okay, does anybody here in the room inside the see a problem with this? Right? That's like overflowing the toilet to get a sample to clean the bathroom floor. Yep. I said to them, this is all waistline. None of this is full pipe contact. This is all gravity flow, right? So maybe you get some full pipe on the, the elbow, but I'm not getting full pipe here. So as soon as I crack back this valve, I'm just pushing all that crud up the, up the line and out of the sample point. And if the sample fails, the tank fails. Even if I think I know where it came from, if the sample fails, I have no positive evidence that the tank passed and the tank fails. So, long story short, we ended up putting ourselves a little T right here to get the sample during validation. What did we not do? Um, we didn't transfer that knowledge to the manufacturing team. So, manufacturing team kept the valve open all the time, right, during cleaning. Right, that was okay. But when they had to be cleaning monitoring, guess what they did? They cracked back on the valve, yep. They pushed the crud up out the sample valve, and it failed. And it failed again, and it failed again, like they sampled like multiple times in a three-day period. They quarantined all the batches until they got us the mode. I was like, oh my god, no, really? No, wait, stop, stop, right? I know what's happening here. But what could you do? They took failing samples. So now we had to tear the piping apart, do squatting all the piping to prove that it came from there. What a mess. So, long story short, after that, we took that bell off. <laughs> and this is gone too, right? You can't use that. So. But know your equipment, know how your equipment's going to be sampled. Ensure your trace matrix contains all your equipment. That's that snapshot you put together earlier. You must be able to assure the auditors that you have captured all product contact equipment in your cleaning validation. Again, they're going to ask, show me a list of product contact equipment. And how do you know it's a complete list? 